Welcome back. This is the third and final video in this series where I show how to make a kotatsu table from scratch. In this video, I will be putting in the final touches. Picking up where we left off in the previous video, the center beams protrude out a bit from the intersection with the edge beams. I use a flush cut saw to cut these protrusions off. Then I use sandpaper to sand the edges smooth. I go one pass over with 150 grit sandpaper. Then I make another pass with 320 grit sandpaper. I don't cut the joints flush on the castle joints as the castle joints need the extra material for strength against lateral forces. If those joints are too weak, they could break off. Now I want to make the tabletop edges even. You can see there's a ridge where the two panels joined up due to one of them being slightly longer. The other side is okay. I set up an edge guide clamp to guide my saw. I make measurements so that the longer panel will get trimmed to the length of the shorter panel. After clamping it down, I double check to make sure the clamp didn't shift. Then I add another clamp to increase the stability when cutting. Now I attach my circular saw to my saw guide. I wanted to test whether the saw was on. A bunch of dust shot out, reminding me to wear my face shield. Now I just make micro adjustments to get the saw to the right position. My first cut didn't cut enough, there is still a ridge, so I adjusted the saw and make a second cut. Now I want to round the edges of the tabletop using a router. I attach a roundover bit and make sure it's set to protrude 1 4th inch above the back plate. Now I glide along the edges giving the corners extra attention. Now I flip the tabletop over and do the same thing on the other side. I sand the edges smooth using a 320 grit sandpaper. Now I want to round the legs. It's useful to have labeled each of the joints. I disassemble the entire table because I will also be rounding the edges and corners of the edge beams. I think it's cool that this table can be assembled and disassembled without any tools or hardware. Friction is the only thing holding it together. I clamp a leg down to the table saw and use the router to round the edges. I do this for three of the edges that are facing outward, leaving the inner edge square. This is both my style and to leave as much material on these thin legs as possible. I do this for each leg. Now I round the bottoms of each leg. This will hopefully keep the legs from chipping. This is a finished leg. Now I put the legs back, being careful about their positions, and I move on to round the edge beams. I am careful to get the edge beams with the outer facing side facing me, as I will not be rounding the inner facing side. I clamp a beam down and route the bottom edge. I also route the corners. I'm basically rounding all the corners that people could bump into and get hurt from. This is a finished beam. I repeat this for all four beams. Now I reassemble the table. I connect the edge beams, legs, and three of the four center beams. I'm leaving one center beam disconnected because I need to carve out a hole for the heater's plug. I have a real Kotatsu heater here that I use to measure out where the hole should be. The length is 15 centimeters. Cutting the short side is simple and I do it on the table saw. The hard part is the long edge. 
I removed the sled and positioned the beam by extending the saw blade up to where the teeth glide by the kerf on the previous cuts. I clamp it down. I use the fence to determine the distance from the edge of the beam to make the cut. It should be around 1.5 centimeters or 3 fourths inches. Now with the blade retracted, I put the beam in place and clamp it down. I then turn on the table saw and extend the blade up until I see it cut into the side I can see. Here I can see the blade through the hole that was cut. This helps me position the beam. I make the second cut. I use the flush cut saw to remove the rest of the material. Now I need to route the edge of the hole so people aren't injured when they reach under to unplug the heater. I clamp the beam down and use the router to glide along the edge. Now I reattach this beam to the table. I put the heater in to test it out. It looks good. Now I want to cut a rabbit around the edge of the center for the heater so I can put a piece of plywood on top of the heater to prevent the heater from contacting a comforter. For this, I need to use a different router bit. I remove the roundover bit and install a rabbiting bit. Now I glide the router along the edge of the center hole. Keep in mind to use the correct direction. You may have noticed that I'm going in a clockwise direction as opposed to the counterclockwise direction I went in when routing the tabletop. Now I measure the length of the edges of the hole I just created. This will be what I cut from the plywood sheet. For me, it was around 31 centimeters. Since my plywood sheet does not have a 31 centimeter by 31 centimeter area for me to cut out, I decide that I will piece two together. I measure 31 centimeters along two edges. I put the sled back on and make two cuts to cut the two pieces out. I chop off the corners using a chisel and round them using a piece of 150 grit sandpaper. I try the fit. It's a little too big, so I sand down the edges a bit more. Now that the first piece fits inside, I fit the second piece next to it and mark where it needs to be cut. I use the table saw to cut the edge. Punch the corners out with a chisel and sand the edges and corners smooth. The fit is nice. Now I mark a hole for the user to put his or her fingers in. I use the router to make these holes using the rabbiting bit that's still installed. I sand the edges to smooth them out. Now I vacuum up the sawdust and we're done. Just kidding. This table may have taken only 3 days to make, 
but it could take up to a month or more to finish. If, like me, you want to use pure tongue oil, a traditional all-natural finish. But I won't get into it in this guide. I'm very proud of this table and hope this inspires you as well. I've only been playing with wood for a month so far, so this guide may have its deficiencies. I learned a lot from watching YouTube videos, and I'll reference some of the videos most helpful to me in the description. Finally, if you're interested, I will be selling these tables in my Etsy shop, which I'll also put in the description once it's ready. Thanks for watching.